Hey folks, and welcome once again to the Red Shirt Report, brought to you by StackUp.org, where veterans are our mission and gaming is our passion. I am Chris Clue Miller. And I am Chris, the Game Case, a.k.a. Cuddles Case. Hope everybody's having a wonderful week and i hope you guys had a great weekend last weekend because i i can tell you what myself and the uh ceo of stack up had an absolute blast on viewboat so if you if you hadn't heard of viewboat it was this wonderful idea for broadcasters and twitch community members and and even industry folks these these people that we get to see at conventions um month after month and you you make friendships with them but it's almost like the uh the old analogy from fight club they're almost like single serving friends <laughs> like you get your package of sugar each time you go to the con and then after that yeah you get to interact and you know you do your professional thing together but you don't get that 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 time to actually bond and, and really like form relationships. And so that was the entire idea behind Viewboat. It was about 200 um, in our group, um, Twitch broadcasters and, and industry folk. Great, great group of people. It was, it was actually funny. There was a couple times on the boat you'd be sitting in and somebody would bring up like, Oh, Oh yes. I came here with a, with a large group. There was about nine of us on this cruise and, uh, yeah, there's um, there's 200 of us nerds that play video games for money on the internet, and people <laughs> would just people would just drop their jaws. But I I can say, after doing uh, I I don't even know probably a dozen events this year, um, Viewboat hands down was my absolute favorite. Just the the ability to spend real time with with other people that get what you do, and and to some extent, just get you like it's such a big part of most of our lives um, to be able to bond with these folks and not talk about business and not uh, pass out business cards and do that whole silly little dance. Um, it, it was it was absolutely a, a phenomenal event. And I think I think everybody that went had an absolute blast. Um, I do also want to mention um, if you've ever been on we, we cruised uh, Royal Caribbean. Um, the Majesty of the Seas out of Cape Canaveral. If you've ever been on a Royal Caribbean ship, they do a um, they do a competition called uh, the World's Sexiest Man Competition. And I just want to throw out there that I entered said competition <laughs> and um, won third place. I, uh, oh, what I walked a away sexy beast you metal. are, Cuddles. Picture yes. didn't happen. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. There, we can't show them on Twitch. The pictures was, are they yeah. not suitable for Twitch? Is that what it is? Yes, there was truffle shuffling what, involved in what my win. T-shirts of the truffle of the the giant tactical muffin tops. Yes, I like that. <laughs> this is what I'm calling it from now. The tactical muffin. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Bam! And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna move that one right on to the holiday of Osiris. So, for those of you who don't know, we had a big event. Uh, commemor I don't want to say commemorating, but celebrating the release of the latest DLC for Destiny 2, uh, Curse of Osiris, which was called the Holiday of Osiris. And that had that was a, a competition. Uh, and it wasn't really a competition, but it was uh, an event that if you donated uh, during the event, you had an opportunity to... Uh, your name was put in the hat, and you have the opportunity of raiding in Destiny 2 with some of the developers. Um, so that event went off without a hitch. Um, it was a really good event. The event winners will be announced very soon. In air quotes, very soon. Uh, I don't know if we have an ETA on that or not, but it will be forthcoming. And hopefully you won if you were able to play that game and get in there and play with uh, and uh, donate. Then, uh, like I said, your name was tossed into the hat there is a possibility that you, yes, you, may very well be raiding with some of the uh, the Destiny developers themselves. And this is, again, this isn't going to be like a public thing. This isn't going to be streamed. It's not going to be hyped. It's just going to be kind of one-on-one -on -one or one-on-four or two-on-two -two or whatever. But there's going to be a you know regular Destiny raid. But it's just going to be you folks in a game together playing 
Um, a lot more intimate, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so good luck to all of you out there. I hope you win. Right on. And I, I, I have to add, um, for my part, a big thank you to um, to Dave, uh, Robo Kraus, and uh, to Sam Sketch, our director of media and uh, producer of this show, um, for all their help running the uh, kind of the operations, the day day zero of the event. Um, that's normally something that I would do and it, this event came out in kind of like he a whirlwind. He was having a sexy beast contest. I, I, yes, I was winning medals for my truffle shuffle and, um, <laughs> it's not that good either, but, but no, these guys stepped in in a big way and this event went off flawlessly. So thank you. Uh, thank you to both of those guys. And, um, that, that's just one of the, uh, one of the small little cool stories of people stepping up and doing great things for stack up. We had an absolutely phenomenal year. Um, thinking, thinking back to all of our air assaults, um, some of the, some of the kind of special missions that we've been able to do, like, um, providing a computer to a, uh, quadriplegic Marine, um, helping one of our air assaults who hadn't been able to game in seven years get to, get to play video games that if, by the way, guys, if you haven't seen that video, go to our YouTube right now and find the Tyler Southern Warfighter engage video. Like the smile That's on that man's point. face yeah. is a, like, it, it's just a really cool part of what we do. And it's why we, it's why we do what we do. Um, and there's, there's much more to come in 2018. Um, we, uh, we're ramping up pretty much all of our, all of our programs in, in one way or form. Um, we're trying out some new things with the stacks that you guys will get to hear about soon. Um, we have our suicide prevention squad Very ramping important. up in a, a, like amazingly quick way. I feel like we were just hearing about this, so, you know, like in staff meetings a couple weeks ago and now it's like, Whoa, the thing like, protocols and tests and, all sorts of fun stuff all kinds of stuff yeah yeah but there's um last year our uh our hundred heroes we we did it with like we didn't get a hundred applications to send out a hundred crates this year we've had a hundred crates stuck in an office for like a week and a half thank you pittsburgh post office um it's just that it stack up is growing in every imaginable way and uh should be some really really cool things coming in 2018 so keep your eyes out and thanks to all of you for all of the help that you provide without you uh stack up can never really be what it is so thank you all out there for uh for helping us bring bring you know these services and, and this help to our veterans um, and speaking of helping veterans um, one of the things that you know we often talk about is the therapeutic nature of video games particularly for PTSD sufferers um, guys who just kind of need to take their minds off of kind of the horrible things that have happened to them and gaming is a really wonderful way of doing that however there are other very important mechanisms by which video games help people in, in various ways, not just veterans. Um, this uh, latest interview comes to us um, out of New Jersey um, from a place called from a place called uh, Galloway Township. There is an institute called the Bacharach Institute for Rehabilitation. And basically what they have there is and, and unfortunately I don't have any pictures of the actual robot, but they call it a robot. And from the description in the article, essentially what it is, it's it, it, in my mind's eye, I imagine that power loader from Aliens, for, you know, anyone who's familiar when, when Ripley gets strapped up into this thing, right? Get away. From, anyway, but it, it, it kind of reminds me we of see, that. We see that you're feeling unwell. Here's a giant robot to Here's attack you. Here's a giant you. robot. So, so it's so it's basically a, a series of armatures that you can be, uh, that essentially you get hooked up to, and it has things for like gri gripping and m maneuverability um, for your legs, for your arms, and they're using this in conjunction with video games to help people with physical therapy. 
Um, these are people that are dealing with all sorts of different neurological disorders and problems. Everywhere from stroke victims to people who are dealing with Parkinson's disease. Um, some children who have with cerebral palsy. So they're using this machine, essentially, and they call it a robot, to facilitate uh, some physical therapy for these people. And so this is just another example of why kind of what we do, what we do, and, and the power of video games. Video games aren't just for entertainment, but they also have a very deep and very impactful, impactful therapeutic benefit. Um, and conjoining that with mechanical mechanisms, and, and Cuddles was talking about our friends over at Warfighter Engaged, who kind of do something similar where they basically take, um, they build video game controllers for people who don't have arms or legs, um, who are suffering from horrible, um, you know, limb amputations, and these these people have been blown up, and, and all sorts of things. Well, these uh, the Bacharach Institute is also doing the kind of the same thing for civilians who are suffering from really terrible neurological disorders, um, and it's helping them. And the the one of the other benefits of doing this is the video games allow them. Uh, it's kind of a stimulus response, so. They're able to gauge improvements over time as the people um, continue with the games and they continue to work with this machine and this device, uh, and they can kind of measure um, improvement. Um, so things like this, Cuddles, I think are really interesting in that you, you meld the technologies, right? You have this entertainment, but at the same time, you made it with, with something like this robot or um, yes, this this device that you can use that will you know help strengthen your arms, or you know rebuild those neurological pathways to allow you to you know increase your hand-eye coordination. You know if you've had a stroke, um, you know getting back into the swing of things and getting your life back and getting that mobility is a huge benefit. Um, so I just uh, this this is these are the sorts of inter the uh, of um, articles that really excite me. Um, because it really gives a lot of clout and a lot of validation to the stuff that we do here at Stack Up. Oh yeah, it's 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 one of those things. I I'm, I'm kind of like every time I see one of these articles, I I'm I'm constantly surprised that this is news. Like video games can help people. Like okay. <laughs> Video games and robots together can help people more. Um, I think that I think that you said that you love these. I love the ones that reference hand-eye coordination specifically, because anytime when I was little, and my mom would tell me to stop playing my Nintendo, I'd be like, "But mom, I'm developing my hand-eye coordination." <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I, I mean, this is I, 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 I too love articles like this because getting the awareness. It's sad. I, I, I joked about being surprised, but I, I want to be at that point, and I love it. It's the little drips and the articles like this and the amazing people out there doing the research, and and bringing these new therapeutic tools in. Um, it's we're gonna get there where it will be like oh another article about how video games help people. And uh, I can't wait for that one. Maybe the robots can help us. I, don't I know. hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that's the great thing about robots, right? They're they're human augmentation devices, right? They're they're doing backflips now. I'm actually getting kind of scared. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's getting kind of crazy out there. But if you if you like me, think that it's getting crazy out there, and you, I I don't know how I can make that segue work. I was going to try. Let's talk about an article about how gaming can help you in social situations. <laughs> I didn't situations. set that one up for you very well. I apologize. Well, you <laughs> know what? Game, maybe gaming can help me in awkward social situations. Um, <laughs> you can, we can make a robot you can talk to to exactly. practice, like interpersonal communications. Sure, as why not? As long as it doesn't do backflips and scare me. <laughs> the day... The day they come up with a clown robot that bat flips and can oh talk God. to me, it's it's over. I would rather have Skynet. Um, but this was this was a really really interesting um, article and a little video um, from WTVY Channel Four, Dothan, Alabama. Um, 
Pulitzer Prize winners. <laughs> so the producer's laughing in our ear and you're distracting us, Sketch. Stop it. <laughs> Go <cut> so <laughs> um obviously people like myself who struggle in social situations may find help in video games. A really neat, like, kind of enticing title, and they go on to dive into, like, the one video game that we don't want to hear when we start reading articles about video games helping, and it's Pokemon Go. So, you kind of know where they're going with that. Well, they can help people that aren't social get out and be more social. Um, and you know what? I, during the, the great Pokemon Go craze of summer of 16... Um, like there were, there were definitely people that you could see, maybe it was getting them out. Um, but I don't think the, the thing that they're saying is it, it, that video games can help people with social awkwardness. Like, I'm, I guess I'm with them on that. Somehow I'm translating it into video games can help those of us that are socially awkward get out. And I think that's where people have failed with like the, uh, the Nintendo Wii and things like that. Like gamers, gamers don't want to get up off the couch. People that don't game really love these little things. But the entire thing is researchers in Canada found that people who are naturally extroverted tend to be better at the game. And they propose that through the game, you can increase your social anxiety and awkwardness. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm having, I'm having problems following the logic of this article and really getting behind the fact that Pokemon Go is is helping out socially awkward gamers. Mm. It seems to me that Pe Pokemon Go... So, so the interesting thing about that was... I mean, it was a kind of a technological... I don't want to say a milestone, but it was definitely something new, right? Where you actually were interacting with things in the world, you know, using your smartphone. And... You know, and you and it was required for you to go out and seek these things out, um, which was really kind of cool, I thought. Um, but, but I, I think I'm kind of in your camp, mostly, um, in that. You know, the 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 requirement was for you to go out and you know catch your Pokemon and things like that, and I guess to some extent that you had. Uh, I don't know. That that's that is kind of a hard one because if you're socially awkward, and there's a game that forces you to go out, I'm probably not going to play that game. Like I have other games. Yeah. Like there's all kinds of different games you can play that aren't going to trigger you with that social awkwardness, right? Like oh wait, I have to go to like the coffee shop down the road, <laughs> and there could be people there. Fuck that. I'm not going there. Like well, I don't like any of those people. It, I don't even and the like other the thing is, well, you're basing this around Pokemon Go. Which, like, make another Pokemon Go. That would be like amazing, like basing an entire physical therapy, like philosophy over the Macarena because it was such a huge hit. Like, there's <laughs> nothing out there. What what's out there that people are playing? Like, you get tired of Pogo. What are you doing? Like, so so are you trying to? So are you arguing that it's that the game itself is too it's narrow or? or it, it's an aberration. Okay, well, that's fair. I don't know that there's been anything we can't quite say like it afterwards. Video right? games can help people. Like, when it's Pokemon Go, which is a craze that's, you know... I guess well, Gen 3's out. People are doing it. Well, and here... Okay, so here's a, here's a counter-argument. Or, or maybe an argument to support your claim. Um, geocaching. You know, back in the day, when GPS was a big thing... Uh, people people would do geocaching, so they would have no. little treasures right no, out people, of the world. People did it. There was like eight of you wearing Birkenstocks and eating granola. That was it. Break. Geocaching was huge, dude. Geocaching was all the rage for the longest time. You know, so for, for those of you who don't know what geocaching is, it's when you basically you go out, you go to a site, and and the site will have basically an X marks the spot. Here's a geo or, or here's a, a GPS location, and there's something there. Go find it. And so you take your phone or whatever GPS device you happen to be using, you go out into the world or wherever, and you try to find this little hidden treasure that somebody's put in there. And, uh, you know, 
so there's like so it's just like a little treasure hunting thing. But so Pokemon Go is kind of like that in that it forces you like the whole point is to go out and do stuff. Yeah. But if you don't, if you hate outdoors or people, then you're not going to play it. Then you're not going to do it. So uh, yeah. So I, I, hold I on, hold on. Here's maybe a better way to form my argument and my 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 question. Um, we we know that video games can help in in a variety of different ways. We talked about that at the top of the show. Um, with robots and, um, what, what say that again, robots, what, what the robot is a robot, robot. a robot, no, an artificially powered Toad? mechanical a creature, a robot. <laughs> oh my God. Go ahead. A robot. A robot. Okay. No, I don't. Like, I don't even you sound know. Like Zoidberg. Let's move on to the next thing you sound article. like Zoidberg when you say a robot. Do you have the another robot. article to talk about? Yeah. Okay. So yes, I do. As a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Twitch and Steam have a gaming award ceremony that they put on every year. Maybe it's only a couple years old. It's called the Video Game Awards Ceremony. Um, and this article in Rolling Stone basically talks about how they're, um, and my, of course, right at the point when I need to reference my article, my laptop decides it wants to fucking shut down. <laughs> so um, basically what it is, is so there's, there was a huge spike in the number of viewers. Um, I think it said that it doubled or tripled uh, the viewership from last year up to like 11 million Plus, uh, concurrent people who are watching the streams are various streamers who are uh, part of this award ceremony. Um, and so they were kind of going back and forth about, you know, what, what caused this. Um, and I guess the year before, they had included China. So China doesn't, China, as some of you may or may not know, they have a state run internet. Um, and the way that they run things is it's very tightly controlled. They don't have, you know, internet freedom over there as much as we do here. However, China was allowed to participate in the streaming event last year, which only, which garnered like a 63% increase in their total viewership. Fuck you, laptop. Um, but this year it, it like doubled. Um, and so one of the things they were talking about as far as the, th uh, something that contributed to that increase was the interactivity that they allowed uh, during the Twitch stream. So they would allow people who were watching the Twitch stream to do stuff like vote on who they thought would, should win the award. Uh, they had a lot more kind of interaction between the people who were actually getting the awards, the award ceremony, the whole thing. Um, and so, so they're just kind of stumbling on this. Um, and so this is something I think Cuddles can really appreciate. Um, and I have an anecdote to this as well. And it makes, it makes a whole lot of sense that if, if you wanted to watch TV, you would just go watch TV. People watch Twitch for the interactivity, right? So we have a chat that's going on, um, and you know, we've got folks that may want, want to talk, um, and feel free to do so if you wish. Um, I don't have my laptop because it decided to give me the big middle finger, but Cuddles is available. Um, but there was a game called Move or Die. And that game integrates really well with Twitch. And basically, it's, it's a game where it's just a bunch of little puzzles and like maybe like a painting game. So you have a bunch of folks playing against each other. And as you walk across the ground, it paints in your color. And the other people paint in their color like little pads. Imagine like, like a Donkey Kong level or something like that where you've got different layers. And you're painting over each other, and whoever has the most surface area painted wins. But then, like after the game ends, like there's a whole bunch of different uh, types of these puzzles, and you can go in your chat as a, uh, if it's hooked up to Twitch, and you can vote on what the next game is that everybody has to play, and and little things like that. And so, having that interactivity is a huge benefit. I mean, if if you have an opportunity, like th they need something like this. For the old carnival, throw the ball at the freaking target with the, the dunk tank, right? They need something like that where, like, if you vote so many times or something, then, like, somebody gets hit in the face with a slapper or something like that. Um, so it makes a certain amount of sense.
that the more interactivity and the more uh, the more involved you can make your audience, the more likely they are to stick around and actually want to contribute. Um, so what do you think, Cuddles? Do you think that you might be integrating something like that, like a big slapper or a squirt gun or a picante sauce shooter to your eyeball uh, based on chat responses in your streams? That, I mean, that sounds like a great idea. I mean, I watch a stream anyway, but that yeah, that would be awesome. So, no, no slapper, no, no. But I, I think one of the cool things that we're seeing is a lot of these events are. Th this obviously isn't a. Some of the functionality either is there for streamers, or would require a little bit too much, like switching to have people voting between different things every five minutes and. Um, but the, a lot of the chat integration is there and stuff like that for games. Like you mentioned, move or die, or, Oh, there's one that I don't remember the name of that. My chat loves to watch me play. That's just you basically playing a platformer and they mess, mess you up in various ways. Like they can give you a pan or a hammer and then they can make there be less gravity. And then the floors are sticky and then there's spikes and then the things are huge and all the pressure's on and you're on level 20. Anyway. It's um, it's a it's a pretty damn cool game. Um, but I'm I'm really excited to see big events like this, utilizing different integrations and adding, really to what makes it different than streaming it on Netflix or putting it on ESPN. The 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 kind of the I guess the words interactivity. Yes, the interactivity is the edge. <laughs> Jeez, words. Um, the interactivity is the edge that Twitch has over all these other mediums right now. The fact to have that chat, the fact to have people be able to interact, the fact that like Kappa is a thing. Like, who the heck is this guy in this little like black and white photo? But <laughs> it, just all these little memes and things and these magical moments. That if you watch the Bob Ross marathon when that first like came out, everybody in chat, Bob Ross would do something and everybody would explode in chat with ruined. And then like 30 seconds later, the chat would respond with, oh, he saved it. And it, <laughs> it was just this stupid, weird little internet thing. But that's that's where... <laughs> shows like this are seeing the audience is because of this interactivity. It's something new. It's something that we've never had. And I, I loved some of the part of the articles where they were talking about how they totally fell on their face a few times, including forgetting to announce PUBG is the winner of best multiplayer best game. Multiplayer game. Oh my God. Just a, just a, just a little bit of a little bit of a hiccup there. Well, I was, it was funny reading that because one of the things that, that surprised me at the end of all of it, because there was all the salt over PUBG's early access. Can we get, get an award? And I was like, well, it didn't. And now I read that it did, but it didn't. So <laughs> that's, that's the perfect ending to that story, my friends, which brings us to, before I even do it, what I'm going to call the perfect ending to the show. So, guys, don't forget, on Fridays, we do have Stack Trek. That is our pen and paper D&D-style um, game that we stream here on twitch.tv slash stackup. Uh-oh. Um... You did that on purpose. That was going to be a perfect ending.
I don't know what happened there. I, I didn't fuck with anything. All right. Well, hello, folks. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I swear I didn't do it. Sketch. Sorry, again. folks. Uh, we we got our production crew a early Christmas gift of a bottle of scotch. Um, and <laughs> cannot confirm or deny um, what's going on right now. Just simply technical difficult is what I'm being told to be saying by my pretty. Okay, I'll stop talking about it. Anyway, <laughs> now this is going to be the perfect end of the show. Stack Trek on it's Friday night. Oh. You don't want to miss out on it. 9 p.m. to midnight Eastern time. Um, there's a bunch of us from Stack Up doing a pen and paper style D&D game in the Star Trek universe on twitch.tv slash stackup.org. So make sure to join us for that. And don't forget to join Red Shirt Raiders for game night tonight. It is Grand Theft Auto 5 online. So make sure you get out there. Bit.ly slash RSR Discord is the place to be. And um, since this is one of our shows towards the end of the year, um, I want to I wanna take a moment and say uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, festive Kwanzaa, and any other holidays that are a festive festivus. Of yeah. course, how could I miss that one? <laughs> uh, but no, whether whether you choose to uh, to celebrate the uh, the holiday coming up on the twenty fifth, or it's just a couple of cold weeks for you, we here at Stack Up want to wish everyone a warm and festive holiday. And one other thing I'd like to mention also, and Cuddles mentioned it also uh, at the beginning of the show, was the Red Shirt uh, Stack Up has started um, the uh, Suicide Prevention Squad. Um, sometimes the holidays are tough for folks. Sometimes there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff comes up. Uh, it's stressful. Um, and it's, it's kind of a tough time for some people. So I would encourage you all, if you are feeling down, um, talk to somebody. If you want to join us on the Red Shirt Raiders or the Red Shirt uh, Discord or the Stack Up Discord, you can hop into the uh, Suicide Prevention Discord channel there and talk to somebody or anybody for that matter. But be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Um, and if you're feeling down, know that there are people out there who care, who love for you, and who would offer you support. And we want very much uh, for you to be, to, for you to be well. Bye. That's, are you going to do the, the truffle shuffle? <laughs>